The whole idea of cultural competent leaders does not mean the library administration. Hopefully they are culturally com competent in their, own, in their own right. But I'm talking about leaders, culturally competent leaders who could be a support staff member, who could be a librarian, who could be a member of, of the facilities uh, department. You can be a cultural, culturally comp or cultural competent leader because you play a role in bringing your library organization around to embrace diversity. So it's not just the responsibility of the library administration. Although I would have to tell you that we probably would need more library administrations across this country that need to be culturally competent. Culturally competent leaders accept the value of diversity. Very simple. Just the fact that anyone in this room can value diversity <coughs> is a step towards culturally being culturally competent. And then the third one, which is the challenge, is that you're able to, comp to cope with the dynamics. And by dynamics, you know what I mean. Good and bad. Fun and challenging dynamics of the change that diversity brings. One of the things when I talk about, uh, not so much culturally, cultural competencies, but when I talk about diversity in general, to make it sort of non-threatening, I talk about the idea of diversity where you have a department, a library department, that has seven women and they just hired their first male librarian. <laughs> or where there's seven people in that department and they hired their first GLBT person. Okay. That's change that diversity brings. I mean, those are just some of the examples. It doesn't necessarily have to be ethnic and racial. Now, characteristics of culturally competent staff, first of all, is attitude. You know what attitude is? Attitude not half the battle. Okay, it truly is. It truly is. I can walk into, into a group and have a little bit of a discussion I don't know what they're doing upstairs, but <laughs> sounds really interesting. <laughs> but just the fact, yeah, okay, just just the fact that you can show that you are culturally aware and culturally sensitive to not only your own heritage but also the cultural heritage of others. The, the being mindful part of being an emotional intelligent leader is being mindful of other people's emotions. And when we talk about diversity, we're talking about emotions. Okay? Other part, another attitude uh, is that you're engaged in cultural, ethnic, and racial diversity. <coughs> I had a great discussion in, in the car with Steve today about the whole, the whole Eldia program that keeps growing and growing here in this, or in this community. And Steve, remind me, I don't think you have, you don't have a Hispanic librarian on staff, do you, Steve? Not at the moment. Yeah, yeah. Which is okay. I mean, this just tells me that they have a great attitude at the Greensboro Public Library to be willing to take on and do Eldia, and it continues to grow and to be a huge program here in this community. Another attitude is recognizing different learning styles. And that was something that I had to understand relative to native, native students. And I also had to understand that and be sensitive re relative to native uh, librarians at the University of New Mexico <coughs> libraries. I had to be culturally aware of and sensitive to the way they operate and how critical 
and how vital their cultural their culture is to everything they do in their everyday lives. Having a wonderful attitude in terms of being comfortable with the differences. And that's, you know, that's hard because you know what? We tend to fear what we don't know. <coughs> Was I fearful of having to work with these Saudi students? You bet I was. I was. Because I didn't know, I didn't know a thing about them. I only read about it, heard stories about it, read, you know, saw things on, read in the newspaper, saw things on TV. So we tend, we tend to fear the, the unknown. And the fact that, the, and differences, and the fact that you can be, you can um, be comfortable with people who are different than you, I think is very, very important as part of an, an, a positive attitude and being a culturally competent person. Now relative to skills, the whole idea that we value, we value people as individuals, I value different ethnic uh, and racial and cultural groups, and the whole idea of universal identity that we're accepting about, we're accepting of everybody. It's a skill to be able to encourage positive interactions between minority users and the library staff. And again, it doesn't matter what type of library, to be able to encourage that is developing a strong skill. The idea that we would promote a very welcoming and positive environment is part of the skill of being, part of, of the skills of being a culturally competent person. So far, you know what, those three, those three, at least those three, including the fourth, let's get into the fourth one, avoid stereotyping. Do you have to be a, a member of a, a minority group to, to have those skills or to develop those skills? <laughs> Absolutely not. And you s develop these skills and you are becoming more and more a culturally competent person. One of the things that I want us to do also is to be able to engage in a discussion after I, I finish this. Uh, uh, again, I'm hoping that I'm presenting this so it's a, a non-threatening, non-intimidating, and I want people to be able to ask questions and, and share comments. Other skills, understand that you're able to understand and you feel comfortable, but di comfortable discussing the whole concept of cultural differences. Ask <coughs> questions. I had to ask, I had to ask um, a friend of mine, actually she was a native, full-blooded Native American from Wisconsin, and if you've met any Native Americans from Wisconsin, they don't look like me, they look more like you folks. 